What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video, I'm going to teach you how to animate an object that follows a path inside of SketchUp with the extension Animator. Today's video is brought to you by my supporters on Patreon. Patreon is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. Uh, one, of the thing, one of the perks of being a supporter on Patreon is you get to vote on the extension that I cover every week. So this week my patrons voted and they selected a new animator tutorial as the video of the week. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so for this tutorial, we're gonna use the extension Animator from Fredo 6. And so when you install Animator, you need to make sure first that you install LibFredo. So um, you can find all of these on the Sketchication website. I will link to them in the notes down below. But you need to make sure you install LibFredo first. That's Fredo's library of scripts that um, his extensions need. And then you're also gonna to wanna to install Fredo 6 animator and we're also going to use tools on surface so Fredo 6 tools on surface in order to create our path though so that's optional um, depending on what kind of terrain or whatever you're trying to create this along and so what I want to do is I want to create an animation where this car drives along this road and this is my city model that I've been modeling and obviously I've still got some work to do but um, it's good it's going to be a good example anyway what we want to do is we want to create an animation where the car drives down the road and then it turns onto this side road right here. And so the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna use animators um, animate along path function. And so I've got this car model in here right now. And what I need to do is I need to model a path that it can drive along. And so in this case, I'm gonna start off and I'm gonna use tools on surface in order to do this. Um, just because this isn't a hundred percent flat, if your path is gonna be on something flat or something where you don't need to follow a terrain, then just drawing a path should work just fine but I'm gonna use the lines on surface function and I'm gonna start off and I'm just gonna draw a path where I want this car to go so in this case I want this car to kind of follow the green axis to about this point and so this drew a line that's gonna follow that path and now what I need is I need an arc which is gonna indicate the turn that the car is gonna make. And you have to be a little bit careful of this because uh, these arcs have a tendency to um, kind of overturn a little bit. And so they accidentally kind of face back in this way. And so when you animate this, your car kind of does some weird turning at the end of this. Um, so just be careful that you're not making this bulge out too much or else you'll get a weird result down here. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna continue my path down this road. So now that I've created my path, what I need to do is I need to use the extension weld, which I will link to in the notes down below to make this a continuous path. Because if I don't do that, then I don't believe this is going to work with animator. So all I did is I just selected these three segments and I go to extensions, weld, I just click on the button and that'll weld this into a continuous path. So now we have our car model and we have the path that we want our car model to follow. So now we're gonna open up Animator. So I'm just gonna right click in here and I'm gonna go down to Fredo 6 Animator. And that's gonna bring up my Animator toolbar. And note that you're gonna need to save your model before you do this. Animator always requires that you save your model before you start doing this. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click on the button for Clip Editor. And Clip Editor is gonna bring up all of my options for Animator. And we've talked about this some in the past. It looks a little bit intimidating when you first open it up, but it's actually fairly easy to use once you know what everything does. Um, but in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to insert a unit movement. And so inserting a unit movement just means that we're inserting a movement inside of our animation. So we're going to click on this. We're going to click the button for new movement. And when we do that, that means that now we need to go in and we need to select the object that we want to move. And so for this one, we wanna go down and we wanna find our car. And you're gonna notice as you mouse over these different things that it's kinda of jumping around a little bit. That's just showing you the individual items that are contained inside of this, um, this component. But what we wanna do is we wanna click on this and we just wanna find the drop down for the entire car. And I will note this Mercedes-Benz E-Class model is a model I downloaded from the 3D warehouse. You should be able to just search that name in order to download that. Um, but if you click on that, 
then that'll select this object and now animator knows this is the object that you want to animate. So we have an object selected, now we need to tell it what to do. And so we need to tell it what kind of movement we want it to do. So for this particular situation, we want the option for path. So I'm just gonna click on path and then I'm gonna mouse over this path and I'm gonna click on it. That'll allow me to select this path and animate my object along it. And you're gonna notice right now that uh, it gives you kind of a different path along here um, than the one that you have selected. And we'll talk about that in a second. But for now, if I was to go in here and I was to hit the play button, you can see how it's gonna take this object and it's just gonna animate it moving along this path. So you can see how it's gonna come up here, it's gonna turn, it's gonna follow this curve. And assuming your settings are set up properly, it should follow that curve. Um, and adjust the rotation of your object along that curve. Uh, make sure that you have the box checked for object rotation. Otherwise, it'll move this along this curve, but you can see how it won't rotate it to face that curve anymore. So you wanna make sure object rotation is checked. And so one thing you're gonna notice though, is when you do this right now, um, you can see how this isn't really following my path. Like it's kind of following my path, but it's kind of creating its own path in here. And we don't necessarily want that. So what we want to do is we want to come in here and we want to check the box for on path. And so when you do that, when you check the box for on path, this will follow your path exactly. However, if we zoom in and look at it, the problem with this is that this is doing this based on the center point of my car model. So my car is like halfway into the ground right now, which is not what we want. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna drag this little slider back to zero seconds, and we're gonna go look at our car. And what we need to do inside of our car is we need to adjust the point of contact. And what the point of contact is, is that's the point from which animator is creating the animation. So right now you can see how it's adding the point of contact in the center of your car. Well, you don't want that, so we're just gonna click and drag this and so what you wanna do is you wanna drag that point of contact until you kinda of get a point that you like in here. So for me, for example, I want my point of contact to be at about the middle of this model. So you can see how I can just kinda of single click and move this around. But I want this to be basically the ground point in the center of my model. So now, because I move that point of contact, you can see how this is animating that car based on that point as opposed to the point before, which was just the center of the model. So now, as this follows along this road, you can see how it's gonna animate the curve and adjust the direction that your car is facing. So now what you have is you have an animation where this follows along this path. And um, I would say be a little bit careful just uh, how close you get to this. Because if you get really close on this curve, for example, um, it looks kind of weird because your front tires don't actually turn. It's just that your car turns. And you could definitely um, animate those tires turning if you really wanted to. Um, I don't really want to get to that level of detail because I want this to be a little further out. And so the other thing I want to show you how to do is how to set up camera tracking. So what we want to do now is we've created this animation. We've got it going kind of the way that we want it to go. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to click save the sequence and exit. And so now what that means is that that car or that animation sequence that we created now shows up over here on your uh, timeliner bar. And so you can see how as you click and drag this, you can see where the car would be at any given point. And so this is good. Um, we have a good animation here, but what I wanna do is I wanna set up a camera using camera tracking that kind of follows along with the car. And so in order to do that, we need to come in here and we need to insert a camera as well as this movement. So to insert a camera, all we have to do is just click on the button right here for insert camera. We wanna click on new camera. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna take you into a toolbar that allows you to set up your camera in the way that you want. And so there's a couple different options for kinds of cameras you can create. Um, the first is a static view, meaning the camera won't move at all. 
The second is going to be a static view based on a scene. And then the third is the one that we want, and that's going to be called a tracking camera. What a tracking camera does is it moves based on an object that you have inside your model. So what we want to do is we want to click on the button for cam or tracking camera and it's going to ask us to select a reference object. What that means is it wants us to select the object that your camera is going to follow. So in this case we want our camera to follow the car. So we're going to click on the car and we're going to select it from the drop down. So and for whatever reason when you do this, this kind of like jumps around um, on your time, um, on your um, in your clip with your time. So you may have to drag this back to zero seconds, but what we need to do is we need to tell it what our camera position is, meaning what height and what, what direction we want the camera to point. So like right now, for example, I've got this kind of like overhead and forward looking camera view. And uh, so that would be what my camera view would be. So if we click on the button for capture camera position, what that's gonna do is that's gonna save your camera position relative to this car. So now, if I click the play button, this camera is going to follow along with this car as it moves. So, and you're gonna notice that right now this stopped, and the reason this stopped is because our overall, the reason this stopped is because our overall clip time is shorter on our camera tracking than it is for our actual clip. So if you look over here, our actual clip is eight seconds long, but our camera tracking is only four. So I want to adjust that. So I'm just going to double click on my camera tracking to go in here and edit it. And I just want to set the duration of this sequence to eight seconds. So now the camera tracking is going to last the same length as the overall clip. So you can see how you can set this camera up and it'll follow along with this car all the way to the end of your clip. So now you've got a full on camera sequence where your camera follows your car all the way along here. And one thing you might think about doing is you might think about having two different tracking cameras. So let's say we were to take this back and make it four seconds long. So that would give me a camera that's four seconds long that follows the car this way. Well then what I might do is I might add a new tracking camera at four seconds. So if I was to click in here at four seconds, I could add a new tracking camera. And we just do the same thing where we select our reference object, which in this case would be our car. And then let's say we wanted our camera when this car turns to be down kind of following it below here. We would just set our camera position right here and then we would click the checkbox. And so what that would do is that would now give us a scene where for the first half of it, our camera's gonna track our car from behind. And then in the second one, it's gonna flip over to our other camera that's directly behind and following along with the car. And so now we have our scene created. And so what we wanna do once our scene is created is we want to export this to a video. So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna click on the button for generate a video from the film. And so one thing that's gonna be really important and there will be a series of instructions in here is you need to install a codec um, that's gonna allow this to stitch your video together. Um, so if you don't have that installed, I think it's called FFMPEG or something like that. There should be a link to it right in here where you can download it and install that. Um, that's gonna allow you to create different kinds of video. Otherwise, all you're gonna have in here is you're just gonna have an image sequence option, which is gonna spit out a whole bunch of different images. Um, but you're gonna need to install that and make sure that's up and running. And then the other things we can adjust in here are things like our speed factor, or the dimensions of the video that we're gonna create, as well as the number of frames. And you can see how down here at the bottom, this will tell you how many frames this is going to create. And you can also create a test image in here. That's just gonna show you the size of the video file that would be created um, when you create this video. And so once you're done with all this, you can name your video, so car moving or something like that. 
and then you can click the button for generate video and you can see how what this is going to do is this is going to export a frame for it's going to export each one of these frames and then once it's done exporting these frames what it's going to do is it's going to stitch them together into a single video so we're just going to let this run for a little bit you can see how this tells you that it's going to be running for about six minutes um, that's the approximate amount of time left before your video is done so we're just going to let this run and then we'll come back and take a look at our result All right, so once your video is completed, you can click on the button to either open the folder or click the play button. And you can see how this actually got created in two formats. I forgot to deselect the movie um, or the MOV format, but we're gonna go ahead and click play and that's gonna open up this animation. So you can see how this animation um, basically follows along with this car. And one thing that I might change about this animation is I might change it so I'm a little further away when this turns because it doesn't look super realistic when it makes the turn. So that might be something that I kind of like cheat around a little bit. But overall, I like the way this animation looks and you should be able to build on top of these principles. I'll link, I'll link to another video where I showed you how to make the wheels turn, but you should be able to build on these principles to really create whatever you want inside of Animator. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Um, have you used Animator before? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even though it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.